David just got anointed. He's dirty, most unqualified from what most people would say. If you're on here today, don't think that things have to change for you to do the thing that God's called you to. God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called and you've been called. And so that's the first thing is if you're on here today thinking like, well, once these circumstances change, once I get a little older, maybe I'm too young, maybe I'm, I'm too overweight to take, you know, to eat better or go to the gym, like all those things that we'll start to believe, no, you're good. Serve the season of life that you're in faithfully now while continuing to focus on what God has for you. Man, when I get a nicer car, then I'll clean. When I'm driving the Benz, yeah. dude, that thing's gonna be fresh inside. But right now, it's just I'm just in the old Dodge Ram. And it don't matter if I throw the McDonald's on the floor. And the attitude will keep you with the that Dodge Ram. 100%, <laughs> you know. Or, you know, by God's grace, if you do get that Mercedes or you do get that upgrade, if you haven't changed, you'll be the same person just in a different place. We don't want to be elevated before we have the character necessary to step into that because the spotlight will be just too much. It'll be too hard, too hard to handle. I love the soccer analogy. Just be prepared. Don't try to be, you know, the forward if you're playing goalie right now. Be the goalie. It's necessary. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the A Leveled Up Life podcast. I'm Brandon Mir Courtney, along with Paul McLean. Glad Good to be, be back, back, man. Dude. Good to see you. Good to see you, bro. Uh, it's not like I don't see you every single day. Um, I'm thankful for that and grateful for that, but it's not every day we get to sit down and, you know, kind of discuss important topics. Have a good and, conversation. And help people. And, you know, a lot of times we have these conversations just amongst ourselves or, you know, family. But, man, we're, we're opening these conversations up to the world. I was thinking about that, dude. Like, masses. some of the conversations, I mean, it's almost like you, you got to check your association by the conversation. That's right. You know, and I kind of thought about some of the people in my life that it's like if the conversations could be recorded. Man, there's so much in there right. to unpack where there's there's some people that when I'm speaking to them, like we're unpacking life, like thought processes, belief systems, yeah. vision. And, uh, and there's those other people where it's just kind of like small talk and stuff. But I think both are necessary. Absolutely. But man, it's good to get in a room where um, we can have a conversation where everybody else can kind of you know lean in and, and hear about what we talk about pretty frequently and um and our job and our goal and desire is to bring you guys some value so today as you leave this podcast you've got very practical ways to level up your life like you can think bigger you can believe bigger and you've also got some very mechanical things too not just mindset but mechanics behind how do i step what does that look like and um and do the, the topic today it's gonna be good it's gonna be good you I talked about it it was one of the series that you just got out of at uh, at god's house and and the uh, man it was such a just a a phenomenal series that I feel like we could get a little deeper in. Yeah. And I want to ask you some questions to kind of get a couple layers deeper than what was even said from the pulpit. Right. And, um, and it was, it was really the life of David. And I think that, you know, it's important for me. Like I've always tried to find people that are, have gone a, ahead of me in the areas of life that I want to go. Right. So they've already stepped across these gaps. And I think the easiest thing to do is have them spotlight things like, Hey, step here, don't step here, do this, don't do that. And um, regardless of where each person lies with their faith, the Bible does a great job in giving us characters that we can follow, Yeah. right? What, what I love is that, you know, you look all throughout the Bible and there's all these different characters and none of them are perfect. No, they're all messed up. They're all dude. messed up. They all got a story. They all got a background. They all got a wilderness yeah. that they've walked through. They've all been through some trials, some situations. And so we can open it up and go, man, I relate so much to that. I could take these principles, truths, and then apply them to my life as opposed to trying to read it and go like, well, he's perfect. I can't be like that, you know? And so uh, we started this series more like David because you look at the life of David. Yeah, he was the king of Israel. You know, yeah, he's known for this, you know, big battle against mm -hmm. Goliath, the that everyone knows about, right? He's this popular character in the Old Testament. But if you look a little closer in his life, man, he went through some valley moments. He went through some hard times. And so as a church, we've just been unpacking that. What does that look like? And see if we can pull out the truths um, and principles and stories that he went through and apply it to our life because he was the only man in the Bible called a man after God's own heart. Hey, real quick, before we get into that, though, because yeah. to, to highlight what you said, which is true, like how everybody in the Bible is messed up, because they're all humans, right? We're all we all fall short of the glory of God, and that's why we need the Savior. But people hear that and they don't like like I heard it, and I was like, all right, I feel a little better about that. And then you start to read it, and you're like, no, dude, they're really messed up. Yeah. Like talk about some of the apostles and like you know their dysfunctions that God chose. Like like Jesus chose these people to yeah. be around him, 
like you had Peter. Well, the- dude, think, think about just Peter's life, right? So after Peter had been walking with Jesus for three years, doing real ministry, Peter left everything, you know, left his boat, left his job, left his everything, and then followed Jesus for three years. And then when Jesus is about to get betrayed, Peter kind of reverts back to his old way of life, and he cuts a dude's ear off. Mm-hmm. It's pretty gangster. It's pretty like I, I, I relate I'm, a lot to Peter. I'm down to throw down. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Jesus in that moment is like Peter, like you're not that person anymore. And Jesus heals the man, you know, that was getting ready to arrest him. Right. And so it's like, man, we all fall short. We all mess up. We all have this Peter inside of us that that wants to, you know, serve and love and disciple and um, be everything that God's called us to be. But we also have the Simon. The Simon, yeah. the Simon Peter, who he was before he uh-huh. was a disciple, you know, and we all wrestle with like, man, I, w- I want to be who God's called me to be. But yet I'm dealing with my past and my history and what I've walked through. And it's just tension. Right. It's just like this this human nature um, that we all have. And so, I mean, you could talk about so many Matthew, the tax collector. I mean, you could just go on yeah, and on and on. Tax collector, that was Dude, like, they were ripping people, people off. Yeah, they were stealing yeah. from people. They were just like. Not the best dudes. Not they weren't the religious rulers. They weren't the priests. They weren't the the town rulers. They weren't the mayors. They weren't the people in charge. They were teenage boys. They were rebels who were out there just, you know. And look at David. So he was a David was a shepherd boy. David was the the eighth son. David was the overlooked one. David was the forgotten about one. Right when the prophet Samuel um, got a word from God that, you know, the son of Jesse is going to be the next king of Israel. Right, the prophet shows up to Jesse's house and says, "Hey, Jesse, one of your boys is going to be the next king." I don't know about you, but if I was a dad and someone came knocking on my door, especially a man of God, a prophet, mm-hmm. which is how God spoke to the city, spoke yeah. to the nation back then, I'd be fired up. I'd be like, "Boys, we made it. We're going to the palace, baby. From the from the pits to the palace, we're we're on our way. One of you boys is about to be it." And so he brings in all seven of his sons that he thinks has the qualifications to be the next king, and then David's out in the field overlooked. But these, about. these other these other kid guys, like externally, yeah, they look what society in the world. Hundred percent, they, they look like the next king. They were tall. They were tall. They were strong. They had the ability, right? Everything on the outside, the appearance would say that guy looks like a king. Well, I know about that example because he brought me up. Yeah, yeah. And, and well, you I, were the third. Son. Yeah, the third. <laughs> and it was because my height disqualified <laughs> me. I guess five foot nine doesn't qualify you as yeah, as yeah, the external yeah. looking like the next king. Right. But um, but man, it was it was a great illustration, and and I think that. It's so easy for people to disqualify themselves and think that, hey, once these conditions take place, then I can be that person. Then I can take those steps. Then I can move in the direction that I believe God's calling me to. And, you know, it's like conditional success. Like I can be successful possibly, but once I get these things worked out, once I look more like a king, once I look more yeah. qualified, and I think that's one of the greatest, you know, lies that somebody can believe because when you live by conditions, man, your life is going to be a, your success will be conditional. Like your, your success as, as a, as a husband, as a father, as a business person, financially, if you put conditions on it, the success of that will be conditional. And, um, I think one of the first steps is to kind of tear off those conditions. Like, yeah. you know, you don't, you, you are exactly where you need to be to go out there and start to progress towards that next level in your life. There's nothing else you need to have. And I think that even with, with faith, like I know I've felt this way before where I was like, man, I, I didn't want to go to church when I felt like I was dirty, right? Like, right. you know, once I stop going out on Friday nights, then I'll go to church. And I remember this all the way 21, 22, when Mimi was inviting us to church every day, like, hey, you should go. And I just remember thinking, I can't go because I have these conditions. Yeah. Like, and I believed them. Like, I'll go. I think it's a good idea. I believe it's something I need to do. I think, I know faith is important. I know relationship with my maker is important. I, I, I proclaimed to be a Christian man of faith, but I was like, I'm not going to go to church until I get these things in these areas, these dark, dirty places so in I my life up. were cleaned up. Yeah. And, and I think that that's easy to believe that. And that shows itself in every single area. Right. right? And talk about, you know, how, what that looked like with David, you know, he was anointed, but he had just like, he didn't take a shower nothing. Like I, I know you, you talked about that yeah. in the message and, and it clicked, it connected that to like how I felt. Right you know, 10 years ago when I was making that faith journey. Yeah. So the story goes, right. The The prophet shows up to the house and says, Hey, one of your sons is going to be the next King. So Jesse pulls all seven of his oldest sons inside and 
the prophet's looking at him. He's thinking inside in his head. It's like, oh, one of these guys has to be the king. They all look kingly, right? But in that moment, God kind of checks his spirit and said, it's not any of these. And then he asked the dad, says, hey, you got another son? There seems to be something off here. He's like, well, there's just David. He's out in the field. He's he's tending to the sheep. But he, but he, ain't, he, ain't, the, he ain't the one. Like, when you see him, you're going to know. Like, this is not right. the one. And so David, you know, walks into the house and immediately right there in that moment, God speaks to Samuel. It's like, hey, that's the one. Anoint him. And so anointing just means like the, the favor of God, the blessing of God is is on his life. Like we're like we're anointed. Right. You're anointed for um, whatever God's called you to do, like the blessing, the favor, the, the calling of God is on your life. Yeah, like so, now we don't have to have a prophet come and say anointed. Like exactly. Like, you're anointed. Yeah, yeah. If you're watching this, you are anointed. Absolutely. But in that moment, so he takes oil, which represents like the Holy Spirit, the blessing, the covering of God, and he he pours it over David's life. But it's like, hey, David just came out from the field. David was dirty. David had been spending all day with the sheep. Probably B.O., everything, man. Smell, <laughs> smelling like sheep, like full on, you yeah. know? And so I, I use this illustration that the brothers who just got, you know, weren't chosen, the dad who didn't pick David, were probably thinking in their head like, wait, 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 hold on, prophet. He, him, he's going to be the king. Little old David, the runt, the, the smallest one, the, the our half brother, he, who was, you know, uh, born into sin. Like his, he's got to clean up first. He's the shepherd boy. He's the dirty one. But right there in that moment, the prophet Samuel pours oil over his life. And so now David's anointed and he's still dirty from, from his work. And I think that's a good picture of how our life should look. Like we shouldn't walk around going, I'm blessed and highly favored. Yeah. I'm the chosen uh, son of God. I'm this, you know, pastor. I'm this uh, Christian. And people look at us and go, man, these people think they're perfect or better than or um, whatever the case is. And that's the complete opposite of how we're supposed to live our life. It's go, hey, man, I'm dirty. I've been out with the sheep. I've been through a hard time. I've had a struggle in my life. I've I've been through a valley. I've been in the wilderness. I've I fought in a lot. I fought a lion. I fought a bear. Like I have a testimony to tell, and yet God still has chose me and called me and blessed me. And people relate more to that yeah. than going, yeah, I'm just blessed and highly favored, too blessed to be stressed, yeah. you know, too, too anointed you to be it? disappointed. Christianese. Christianese, yeah, it's a, it's a whole language. <laughs> it's, it's, it's this, and that's really what uh, I think has been the success of our church. You know, last week we were just talking, or a couple of days ago, we had the highest attendance ever at God's house. Over a thousand people. A couple years in, thousand, over two and, thousand and a half people. years in, over a thousand people on a Sunday. Man, that's great. It's it's ridiculous, and um, that that's not normal. Like the average church in America is seventy people. Um, I, I don't know of many churches who ever reach a thousand. Yeah, we're gonna have a podcast where I'm gonna we'll, interview. We'll talk about all that. Yeah, yeah you know, Brandon, and, and kind of unpack that because that isn't normal at all. And and I think when we say that number, um, it's so different than when I was in in business and we would talk about the numbers. Sometimes it was like. I'd have to realize or get people to to realize, I mean, it's not about the numbers. It's about what the numbers mean. Absolutely. What they reflect. Like when you say a thousand people and we unpack how many people have, have been baptized. It's like, dude, it's how many lives have been literally dramatically yeah. transformed forever. And the same thing as I'd go through business and we talk about our numbers and, and how many people are hitting these different levels. And like what filled me up was like, dude, the financial transformation that was taking place was above the numbers. The numbers just reflected our purpose and call, which was to help people level up in right. their financial situation. But, you know, really what I want to do is is get into this 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 point of, okay, David just got anointed. He's dirty, most unqualified from what most people would say. Yep. So so point one would be like, you know, where if you're on here today, don't think that things have to change for you to do <laughs> yes. the thing that God's called you to. Like like God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called and Come you've on. been called. And so that's the first thing is if you're on here today thinking like well, once these circumstances change, once I get a little older, maybe I'm too young, maybe I'm I'm too overweight to take, you know, to eat better or go to the gym, like all those things that we'll start to believe. No, you're good. Now, once you believe that, the second point is the process, because you said in the message, like David didn't all of a sudden get a point anointed and then grab his crown, like, all right, see see you fools later. Yeah, you, you, you thought. You you thought I wasn't Look the at one. Me now. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he walked out with his gangster limp man, had his crown. <laughs> you know, it's like I'll see you fools later. Yep. You know, a bunch of haters. No, he went back to the field. Yep. 
he went back to the field and then talked, you know, how many years well, went by and, you know. What's interesting that. is that the king at the time, King Saul, he was, he had the same anointing on his life. Like he was chosen by God to be the king. But when he was anointed by the prophet Samuel to become the king, by the time he was anointed, which means like chosen by God and appointed was one week. Like he was anointed to be the king. Oh, that's interesting. And appointed to be the king in one week, which is like. That's how we want to live life. Like, but that's what people call. They wanted that, that. People want a king in a week. We want to be a king uh -huh. in a week. Like, I want the overnight success. They right were, now. they were, they were yelling at Samuel. Like, we want a king. We, we want, want a king. exactly now. So God's like, trust me, you guys don't want a king because mm -hmm. a king's gonna like, you know, he's gonna start taxing you, and the king's gonna send you to war. Like, let me be your king. Let me lead you. But the, the people didn't want it. So like, hey, you want a king? Go ahead. I've chosen Saul. Saul's gonna be your king. Saul didn't go through a wilderness season. Saul didn't go through a trial. That's Saul good. didn't go through a hard time. I didn't think about that. So he became the king in a week, right? And then what happened after he was king, well, he began to take matters into his own hands, like we do, right? So it's like you see people that have overnight success. You see people that just go viral. And they don't have the character necessary for their calling, and so they end up screwing it up. Like when, when, when you step into the place that God has for you or, you, or you get a bigger platform than you're prepared for, if you're not ready for it, if your character is not developed enough to be in that place, you're going to screw it up. The crown will crush you. The crown will crush you. And so you see people falling all the time. That's where mistakes happen. That's where cheating happens. That's where all, just all these mistakes, because their character is not developed enough for the calling, right? And that's exactly what happened to King Saul. He, be, he, he becomes egotistical. He begins to take matters into his own hands. So the difference is when David gets anointed king, that's good. it is. He's anointed, and then he's attacked. And no one likes to, to be anointed and then attacked. We're supposed to be anointed, you know, protected, prospered, lifted up, right, promoted. So David is not a king in a week. David, by the time he's anointed as a 15-year-old boy, it takes him 22 years to step into the palace. And who wants that? Nobody. And it wasn't just a typical 22 years. No. It was It was. It was. Goliath was just the beginning. Like imagine having a, a, the biggest fight of your life right after you're anointed to be king. But that was just the tip of the spear. Then he's, you know, uh, the king gets jealous of him. Running. The king tries to caves. kill him twice. You know, he's hiding in caves. He's just a, a, a hard life. But those 22 years from the time he was anointed to the time he actually became appointed the king, was necessary to build his character so he can be the man after God's own heart and lead the nation of Israel like God actually wanted him to lead so he wouldn't just repeat his predecessor. And none of us want to have a wilderness season, but the wilderness is necessary. Dude, that's so good. Like the field, yeah. the trials, the trauma, the pain. It has to happen. It has to happen. Like it's developing you to become the person that God needs you to be. And with it's like it's like Joseph, right? Joseph has a dream as a young boy that one day he's gonna oversee the nation, that he's gonna be in charge. But how long does it take for it to actually happen? Well, it takes twenty one years until he finally steps into the the reality that God had showed him as a young boy. But if he would have been put in charge of a nation right then, when God gave him the dream, he would have been an egomaniac. He would have been not ready for it, right? Because what, what was he doing when he got the dream from God? He was wearing his father's robe. Yeah. He was telling his brothers about the dream. Hey, boys, I got a dream from God. I'm going to be in charge of all you guys, right? What if that would happen right then? Well, he would have been, like, crushed. It but been, he, it, that blessing would have been a snare. Exactly. So he went through the pit. He went to jail. He was falsely accused. Like, all these things had to happen in order for him to become the person that God needed him to be. And we don't like the process. Dude, this gets me thinking like, man, like the Bible for one, man, it's, it's, a uh, it's exciting. Like, dude, it's, it's, a uh, it's, it's a fun, it's like you're a part of an adventure, man. When people are reading like, man, I just don't know. It's like, dude, the, the, or they're like, man, that's, that's old. I like, know, man, this is today. Absolutely. This is today. Meaning that anybody that's looking at somebody's life and they're thinking like, man, they just, they just got it so good. Look at where they're at now. Whether that's their their business, their fitness, finances, their yeah. faith, their relationship with God, and, and you're like, man, that it must be nice. 
it's like, yeah, I mean, I think most people want that, but do you want to have to go through what you got to go through to get that? Yeah. Because it doesn't just happen. Right. And, you know, to me, as you're talking about that, and, and it's kind of like, it, it's, it's like I'm having an, an aha moment thinking about it because it's like Saul was, was, he, he could have been just as good of a king as David. Like he, he was, was supposed to he be. He was supposed to be. God chose him. wasn't like, I'm going to choose a guy that doesn't have the right abilities and potential. Right. He had that, right? God chose him just like he chose David. But the difference was the process. 100%. One week, 22 years. Right. Right. That one week. Man, it felt good because Saul's like, dude, I ain't got to go through none of that stuff. I only got one week, man. Last week, I was just Bro, like, I was just chilling. If, now I'm the king. If that happened today, right? So think about it. If someone became king in a week, he would be on every podcast. He would have a, a number one New York Times bestselling book. He would be on every talk show because we'd all be trying to figure out, how did you do it? How did you become the king in a week? Because that's what our flesh desires, man. Mm -hmm. Give us the secret. And God's like, I don't make kings in a week. Like, I, I, I'm looking for Davids. I'm looking for people who would serve faithfully in the field. I'm looking for people who would just serve the season of life that they're in right now well. I'm looking for people that aren't going to complain about where they're at. I'm looking for people that aren't looking for the spotlight, that aren't looking to go viral, that aren't looking to be the next sensation. I'm looking for people that are willing to go through the process so I can fulfill my purpose in their life. But like, dude, we live in a culture now where it's like the process, that's a cuss word. Yeah. It's like what you think is, isn't. What 100%. you think isn't, is. It's, it's almost like the Bible says like, hey, everything's upside down. Uh -huh. You know, you want to be great, be the biggest servant. You want to be first, be last. It's like some Ricky Bobby stuff. Yeah, I like that. You dude. know, well, you know, I think, I mean, dude, like you, you start unpacking that. And, and we, what I want to do is kind of look at some of these key responses that David had through the process. Yeah. Because that's why we've got the word is so we can read it and, and have some wisdom and some understanding of, of how to step, how to think, how to behave, how to, how to have faith, all these different things. Yep. And, and the reality is like, not to get down a, a different path, but man, David in that process, he had some big mistakes, but those mistakes didn't define him. That was the difference too. Like yeah. the mistake, he didn't like all of a sudden start to pick up this identity of saying, man, I'm just a, a horrible person. I'm terrible, man. I'm, I'm a failure. I'm not any good. Like I'm, I'm running, I'm scared. I'm running from Saul. I've, 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 I've slept with this other woman, like all these things. He, he made mistakes, but he immediately repented. And you read like the book of Psalms and, you know, you can almost hear like that. You could see this like yeah. mountaintop highs and valley right. lows and, and all these things. But, but he had issues like we'll all have issues and make mistakes on this process. Right. But even his responses were good 100%. and made a big difference, you know? And so um, I just think that when he goes back to, the field and he's and he's serving the season he didn't get all arrogant and haughty and think like oh i'm the man he went back and served his season yep. and i think today man there's so many people because of of social media and and um everybody falls victim to this where you just start looking at other people and and you disqualify where you're at right you could think like well i'm just a mom i'm just you know, an employee, I'm just this, whatever it is, you just put, you put just in front of it yeah. because you're minimizing it because you don't think it's that good. Right. And then I believe that what that does is it leads to like 50%, 70%, below a hundred percent of your commitment to that. So now because you're just that, why am I going to do anything great with just that? Yeah. Now I always say appreciation will, will dictate and determine performance. Like if I appreciate my wife, I think about her. I wake thinking like, man, I got to do date night this week. I think about like, what kind of thing can I do to make her feel special? Can I write her a note? But if I'm not, if I'm not appreciating her, if it's like, that's just my wife, right? Yeah. Like, like I'm going to take her for granted. And then all of a sudden I'm going to go to lower levels in that area of my life. Yeah. And so I think that it's too easy. Like David could have went back and said, man, I'm just a shepherd. Yeah. I'm just a young I'm just kid. Jesse's eighth son. But he did two things though. He he held him, got his confidence from who he was called to be, which he was called to be the king, but he served a season where he wasn't doing kingly things by any means, 
with his full heart. And I've had a lot of conversations with people over many years where they're just like, man, I just feel like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm lacking purpose. Like, I don't feel like I, I have my purpose. And so they kind of go through everything that they're purposed for at a, at a, at a half, you know, half effort because they don't feel like they're working on the purpose. And I think that what you got to realize is, man, when we serve this season we're currently in with a hundred percent commitment, with a positive attitude, like patience isn't just like waiting. Patience is the attitude that you hold on to while you wait. And see, David waited 22 years. He was patient, but he also was patient with the right attitude. Yeah. Like he held himself in the right way. He was he was humble, but he was hungry to go after the the, the desires and the and the purpose that God had had for him. But he was humble to know that he's little and God's big and all these things. But I just want to remind everybody that man, like. So our kids play soccer. I'm going to give this example real yeah. quick and then we'll go. But, you know, we have all these kids in soccer. In fact, my, my oldest daughter, um, you know, she's in a, a CIF Shout out. semi-championship game tonight. Apple Valley Girls yeah, Soccer. Yeah, they're killing it, breaking records, creating, you know. They're calling them the dream team, bro. Well, they are, man. Nobody's yeah. ever done this. I know. Um, but, you know, so I've watched her since she was like six, seven, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and the progression of that. And um, when you're like... When your kid's four and five, and we've coached them all those years, like how do you win? How does your team go undefeated when your kid's four or five? It's the team that yells the loudest. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and like, dude, we, we can get loud. You know, you just got to yell go because there's so many distractions going on yeah. that they just need to be reminded like, dude, you just got to go. Just run. Because at that age, anything will distract them. Yeah. I call them like butterfly, mm -hmm. you know, catchers, right? It's almost like they look like Heart they're- Kelly. Yeah, well, out there doing cartwheels. Well, they look like I thought they were. They look like they they took some mushrooms and they're on hallucinogenics, man. Like they're out there just like picking up grass, yeah, like letting yeah. it fall, you know, watching the grass kind of just like fither down and and. Um, but as they get older, they start having to. It's not just go. And for a lot of people, man, the answer right now is just go. Like you're you're thinking too much and yeah. doing too little. Just go. But then as you, as you kind of move forward and you you get these purposes, right? Maybe you're a parent. You know, maybe you got a job now, whatever it is, as you start to become an adult and you have these different roles, now you've got to stay, you know, how are you serving that position? And yeah. so as I watch the kids kind of progress, you know, they get to U10, like in brand, your boys are um, U14 now, right? Mm -hmm. um, they're not U14. U12. U12. Um, at that level, now it's really important for them to play in their position. Yeah. And, and for me, like the team that wins the game, Right. So if you're saying, hey, how do I win the game? And I think a life life is kind of like a game, not like it's a joke, but like I think of my marriage as a game. I want to win it. Yeah. I don't want to lose it. I, you know, how, what, what caused me to lose the game? Well, going and looking at somebody else will cause me to lose the game. Yeah. What caused me to win the game? Like loving my wife, like Christ of the church, like serving her. Like there's win, I want to win in all these games. And so when you look at these these soccer teams, you know, as they get older, the team that wins is the team where the kid understands, like, I got to serve my position. I can't be just chasing the ball around and, and just following it around because when that ball gets kicked to that side of the field where I have an opportunity to go score and win, I'm not going to be there. That's good. And see, that's what we'll do a lot of times. We start chasing all these different purposes. And our mind is not presently where we're at. How do I serve this purpose of what God's given me? My mind is man, I should be doing more, man, I, man, I should be here. I should be there. And so you're chasing this ball around. And when God passes that ball to you, the door opens up, you're not there to receive it. Now, the good thing is that, that God never stops passing the ball. So if you're like, man, I think, I think that's happened to me. Well, just get back in position. Yeah. The ball will get passed back to you. He's a good and faithful God. Amen. Like he'll pass it back to you. But are you serving your position? Are you working the roles you've got unto God or unto man? Because if it's unto man, then it's like, man, I don't want to give 100% because my boss is this or because this is that or because my spouse is that or because she said this or he said that or the resentment's there or my kids did this. But are you serving it 100%? Because when you do that, then you can take off that 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 limiting pre-qualifying word that we so often put on, which is I'm just this. Yeah. But when we can remove that and say, I'm going to give 100% to this position, even when I don't feel like I'm I'm making any impact on this game, even though I'm a winger on the left, and man, the ball's been on the right the whole time, and I can see it. Mm -hmm. I can see everything going on. I can see those people winning. What What about me? Man, just serve the roles you've got, yep. because when the ball gets passed back to you, man, in a moment, you can go from 
not feeling like you had any impact in the game, right? And in a moment when that cross comes, when they switch that ball, yep. and you got that open field in front of you, man, you went from being the person that seemed like you weren't qualified or you weren't progressing, and all of a sudden, boom, the breakthrough's there. You make the game-winning winning shot because you got to go That's through good. that. I love it. And there's analogies, all different ones. It. Like, so good. you know, like uh, the wine comes from a, a grape getting crushed. We talked about the butterfly, yep. right? Like a butterfly that's in the cocoon that's transforming. If somebody tries to just help the butterfly out, like you just try to open the cocoon just a little bit, like I'm going to help this little guy out, man. Like he's struggling, get out. I'm going to help this one out. He'll never survive because he has to struggle to learn how to fly. Yep. And we can even do that with our kids today, yep. which it's like, man, Timmy, Timmy's <laughs> whining and complaining. Give him the iPad again yep. or do yep. this or or whatever just makes him shut up. No, man, like you're killing the character that is essentially needed for him to go after the purpose and calling that God's got. And so, I mean, I just think that like every you know, for me, I, my, my message is I wonder if the purpose that you're waiting for is already in your hand. But once you start serving that 100 percent, God's then going to give you the next crown he's going to set you up and bring you to the next place so good. you know i love it man i think that's really been the story uh, of, of our lives and really a, a game changer a revelation it's like man if i'm not yes i have the future in mind and yes i'm thinking about the next place that that god has for me and yes i'm thinking about that next business idea or where i want to be or that dream house or whatever it is like we should be thinking about the future while also being extremely present in the moment. Like that's been a revelation for me in my life, no matter what season of life I was in. I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm not only a preacher and a pastor, but I'm a janitor, you know? And like I have a, a company and what we clean, like that's, it's, it's dirty, it's nasty. It's like, it's not glamorous at all. And I used to kind of despise it because um, I grew up kind of, kind of doing that job, you know, working for my dad and, and cleaning and then all of a sudden, when it became mine, I was like, you know what? If I could just serve like my dad's vision when I was working for him as if it was mine, then maybe one day I'll be blessed enough to have my own. And when I and when I thought about, you know, when I quit complaining about my job, when I quit good, complaining man. about the season of life I was in, because I was like, dude, I'm a college graduate. I got my bachelor's degree. Like I'm young. I got a Mercedes. Like, Clean dude, no total dude I seen you, bro. You were like buying houses, flipping houses, driving like all this cool stuff. And I'm out there like just mopping, cleaning toilets come, come in the comparison starts sure. to set in. I'm like, dude, this sucks. I don't want to be doing this. But when it's like, Hey, if I could just serve this season faithfully, if I could just scrub this toilet to the best of my ability, you know, if I could just do whatever I'm doing right now with integrity, with honesty, um, then maybe one day, you know, I have, I have my own cleaning kingdom, you know, I have my own, you know, palace. Um, and, and that's exactly what's happening. That's exactly what it's has good, happened. Dude. I got my own business. I got, so it's like, dude, when I just, I don't, I don't even know where I learned it, but just like serve the season of life that you're in faithfully now while continuing to focus on what God, God has for you. It's kind of like, uh, we were talking about this earlier. I always used to say, man, when I get a nicer car, then I'll clean it. Mm -hmm. When I, when, when I'm, when I'm driving the bins, yeah. dude, that thing's going to be fresh inside. But right now it's just, I'm just in the old Dodge Ram. I don't matter if I throw the McDonald's on the floor. It's like, and that that's not the truth. And the attitude will keep you with the that Dodge Ram. 100%, <laughs> you know. Or, you know, by God's grace, if you do get that Mercedes or you do get that upgrade, if you haven't changed, you'll be the same person just in a different place. That's good, yeah. And I don't think that, that God don't want that for us. We don't want that. We don't want to be elevated before we're, you know, have the character necessary to step into that because the spotlight will be just too much. It'd be too hard, too hard to handle. So I love, I love, I love the soccer analogy. Just be prepared. Don't, don't try to be, you know, the forward if you're playing goalie right now. Just be the goalie. It's necessary, you know. Um, That's good, man. I don't know, man. I think like if we can just remind ourselves, like, hey, there is, there is seasons of life that are necessary to get me to the place that God needs me to be. Like if your girls right now, if if Penelope was was mad. I was like, I should be out there playing in that CIF game. I should be on Peyton's team, who's, you know, a junior 16, in high, yeah. 16, and playing up his eight. nine, eight. Yeah. You'd be like, girl, you got years to go. 
You haven't even gotten to U12, U14, U16. Like, yeah. there is levels to this life. Don't be frustrated because you see someone ahead of you, further than you. You got to celebrate them. You got to celebrate them. You got to love on them. You got to appreciate, like, people that are further ahead of you. Learn from their life, their mistakes, their trials, their wilderness seasons. And don't get frustrated because God has you maybe hidden for a reason. God is maybe preparing you to, to unveil you to the world. But in the meantime, while you're out taking care of the sheep for your father, while you're, while you're doing that thing that's not glamorous— you know, work on your character. That's what happened to David. He was out there singing. He was out there worshiping. He was out there playing the guitar, playing the harp. And then, you know, he gets called up to the palace because, not because he was anointed king, but because he could play the harp real well. That's the first reason why he got called to the palace, you know. So, I don't know, man. I think that if we could just focus on the times that we're in, you know, um, Serve not, com not complain about. I think complaint is like the number one thing that, I think complaining kills Dude, your calling, man. A hundred percent complaining. I mean, the nation of Israel were complaining. That's you know, a cycle about the manna that God was sending down because it was like, oh, well, back in Egypt we had we had liver. And, yeah, we and had you onions. forget about the you, slavery and the bondage, yeah. and you highlight mm -hmm. the thing that you thought was better, and then it kills the present purpose that you had before. What you was so and, crazy? And the way you could be grateful. I was reading. I think it's in Chronicles. There's a list of like what kept. Uh, the nation of Israel out of the promised land. It's like, well, they were building idols to other gods. They were, you know, there was sexual immorality. There was th this list of all this yeah. stuff that they were doing that kept them out of the promised land. And one of them was complaining. I was like, wait, what? Complaining? Kept them. So it's like, dude, complaining is almost like a, it's almost like a, a slap in the face to God. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, you're not trusting like where I have you right now. You're not trusting that I'm using this season of your, you're not trusting that I'm using this pain right now for a purpose. You're not trusting that I'm using this hard time in your life right now to to prosper you in the future. Like I'm I could see the end from the beginning. Like you're complaining about where I have you right now. Like just put your trust in me that I'm going to use this season of your life to develop you, to establish some character and some hard work and some, you know, whatever is necessary for the place that God has for you. Mm -hmm. So it's like, man, if you find yourself in that season, don't complain about it. And what I've learned and had to understand is that complaints aren't just audible. Complaints can also be in your heart. Because you can be like extremely joyful on the outside, but on the inside you're grumbling. Yeah. This sucks. I don't know why I'm doing this. This uh, I, uh, this is stupid. Right? And and I don't know about you, but my Bible says that, you know, God knows the thoughts of a man. Thoughts of a man. Like he can, he knows what you're thinking. He knows what's in, inside of you. And so you can complain your your way right out of your calling. And he compares and he cares enough about you to not bless you when you're in a complaining state. Because mm -hmm. I mean that that mm -hmm. that would be the worst thing you could do. You right. know that'd be like your kid. One of my kids, you know, Penelope goes and sm just hits Parker right in the face. And I'm like, sweetie, I know you're probably mad. That's why you punched her in the face. So here's some chocolate. <laughs> like, right. like what? What am I gonna do? But like yeah. you know, we think it's it's different for us, man. Like we love our kids that way. But like you know. God loves us that way too. Absolutely. Like he's not going to bless us in a state that isn't a blessable state to get after the next level, you know? And man, I've always looked at brand like, you know, in, in business as people are leveling up, like there's that process, there's that gap. And I feel like complaining is like casting quicksand, you know, complaining, yeah. ex whether that's excuses, justification, anything that's more of like a victim mindset that cast that sand. So now you, you're like, man, I want to get better. You start stepping, but you're going nowhere, yep. right? You're just stuck in the wilderness wandering for 40 years. Why were they wandering? Well, the complaint was quicksand. It wasn't a 40 year journey. It was, they were moving and going nowhere. Yep. And, and I think that when you, when you lift off the complaining and then one way that helped me out, man, cause I remember being 19 years old, dude, I'm a first convention just sitting there like looking like starstruck, like, oh my gosh, look at that. That person makes over a million dollars a year. Look at their business. And then uh, I remember like getting to the state of like, almost like trying to, like where I was, I was like almost hating on them, you know, like, cause I'm looking at how hard I'm working, man. I'm working 150 hours a week. I feel like I'm gone, you know, nonstop and, and like they're there. And so there must be different things that got them there. They must've got lucky and all this. Yep. And I, I remember getting checked and being like, no, man, like, like if I want to accelerate 
my process to get there, I need to celebrate. And whatever I celebrate, I will accelerate in my life. And so I started celebrating, being the biggest fan intentionally, like, and, and not just faking it, but being like, man, if, if I want to get there, I can't, I'm not going to get there hating on the pl- person that's exactly where I want to be, yep. right? And so I think that was a, a big pivotal moment that turned in my attitude in that process because I remember, dude, giving everything I had, man, being gone day in, day out. Like, dude, I don't even remember my 20s. I was gone so frequently. and um, But the moment I started to, like, be like, man, I'm going to I'm gonna applaud what I want to get. Yeah. So if, hey, man, I want to get financially free, I'm going to applaud those that have gotten financially free, man. If I, if I want to... Yep you know, build my faith up. I'm going to applaud the person that was able to navigate a, a struggle and a storm yeah. and get through all that. You know, I'm going to applaud what, what I good. want. And, um, and I think that makes a, a big difference is like, man, you got to be moved by faith, not by feelings That's because good. you'll feel all kinds of different ways. But when you've got such a clear vision of that, no, I'm going to be appointed. Right. I'm going to serve the purpose and calling that God's got for me. So even if I don't feel like it right now, even if my circumstances doesn't reveal that, I'm going to still step in this faith that yeah. God is at work. He's got a plan and a purpose. It's all going to come to fruition. And that's how you get, I think, through those those moments is when the faith is bigger and shines brighter than the feelings in a moment. That's good. We'll push forward. Right. And and that's really the life of David. I love was it. a guy that you know, he's going through this process and he's running from Saul and even his character and how he handled Saul, he could have killed him multiple times and didn't do it. You know, he just like still held him at a high esteem. He still celebrated him yeah, because he was getting ready to be king. Yep. Right. He wasn't like, like he knew that he, man, he's just a, a man. He's just stumbling. He's falling. He's, you know, but he continued to, to seek God and, and treat him and the way that we would want to be treated, which is we're looking for grace and mercy. Are we offering grace yep. and mercy? And um, I just think that the one last story I'll, t- I'll say, and I'll, you know, I want you to kind of speak to a brand and wrap it up. But like, you know, one of the, the and it's a, I can't remember where it's at in Psalms, but David is like, he's just going nuts. Like he's, they say he's drooling, like he's going insane. It's when he enters the Philistine territory, right? And he goes there to hide from Saul. So he's in enemy territory, hiding from the one that wants to kill him, which is Saul at that time. And he's going nuts, right? They, the Bible says like he's he's gone crazy. He's drooling, like he's acting like a madman. And then like that very scripture, it, it, it talks about how he's extolling God. Like yeah. he's giving that praise to God, like God, I need you. And, right. and so he didn't feel like faithful he didn't feel like he was just ready to go out there and conquer all these things man he was scared dude right. he's terrified and and what i got from that was like man and and i took i held on to this a lot as we went through the journey with parker is like i'm not my feelings right i i don't have i can't get consumed and caught up in my feelings i gotta hold on to my faith which is in the unchangeable character of christ yeah. and as as i went through that what i realized in that book like in Psalms that David was terrified of Saul, but Saul ends up falling on his own, his own sword. Mm-hmm. So David was scared about Saul and that he was going to die, but he didn't have to do anything. Saul fell on his own sword in right. all that time in that Philistine territory. What David didn't know is what God knew that while he was going there, scared, going through it, God was preparing him to conquer a giant, a Goliath, a a nether level that was way above what had caught his fear in that moment, which was Saul. And that greater level was the Philistine army. He was learning when they went to bed. He was learning their strategies, what they did, what they didn't do, their weaknesses. And so all that time in Philistine, the, the enemy territory, he was preparing himself not to defeat Saul, but he was preparing himself to defeat the very thing that was above Saul, the thing that was the higher level above them and and I think that when we can kind of hold on to that truth that whatever you're going through right now right in that process of going from anointed to being appointed that maybe that thing that you're scared of or you're looking at that just seems like man it just seems too big that God's already got that conquered and he's preparing you not to conquer that but to conquer three levels above that because he doesn't want us to be the person that wins the lottery and we're like oh god this is great and then just like statistics say, like 90 plus percent of them end up bankrupt worse off than before because now they got to live with the regret that they yeah. they got the thing that they believed was going to give them happiness, but they never developed the disciplines, the character and the habits and routines 
to actually withstand the riches that was just given to them. Good. It's got to be earned, right? That's good. Really good. And just to tie it all up, as you were talking about, you know, seeing these guys ahead of you who are making money and that paradigm shift to go from, I'm not going to hate on them, but I'm going to celebrate them. I'm going to, I want to, I want to know what they know, right? It reminds me of, you know, after David killed Goliath, they go into the city. The Bible says that all the girls start singing and dancing. That Saul's killed his thousands, but David, that boy's killed his tens of thousands. And Saul becomes jealous of David, the shepherd boy, right? When he's the king of Israel, what's he got to be jealous of? And I, I'll just, I remember one time you preached a message um, at God's house in, in the very beginning. And I was sitting in the audience and I was, I mean, you crushed it. Like it was just like an unbelievable word that you brought. And people were going nuts, you know? People were like, that was good, blessing. And I was thinking to myself in that moment, like, I can make a, a, a decision that no one would ever know externally. But I was thinking to myself, like, I can celebrate and appreciate that I got a David on my side. Like I got someone on my side that can slay thousands, that can kill thousands. Or I can be like Saul and be like, well, what about me? Well, like I'm, I'm the pastor. I'm, I'm, I'm the king. But it's like, and, and, and I never, I was, ne I was not weighing the difference between the two. I was just thankful that I had someone on my side that could do that. I got, I, David's on my team. Like how much more would Saul have prospered if he would appreciate it, David, and been like, dude, I got someone on my side who's a leader, who's a man after God's own heart, who's not scared yeah. of giants, who could, who could like, who was successful, who had a, an amazing gift set. If he would have just celebrated him and appreciated that relationship and nurtured it in a better way, then King Saul would have went down as the greatest king of Israel ever. Yep. But he didn't. He became angry and jealous and bitter as opposed to grateful, thankful, and, and blessed because of it. You know. So number one, I, I appreciate you for, you know, I feel like we're two Davids going after the calling of God on our life. Um, but number two, it's like, I think to kind of wrap it all together. I think the wilderness seasons, the the seasons of life that were hidden, that were overlooked, that we feel undervalued, that we know we're appointed, but we're not yet, uh, we know we're anointed, right? But we're not yet appointed. We're not yet to the place where we're supposed to be. I think those wilderness seasons can be some of the most valuable seasons of life that we'll ever go through. Like if you listen to most pastors, most successful business people, uh, anyone with a story or any amount of success in any area of life, typically what they preach or what they teach are the hard times that they That's went right. through was what made them um, and gave them the ability to now live in the success that you see. And so if you're out right. there and you're going through a hard season, like you look around right now and you're like, dude, this is not the life I'm supposed to be living. Find, find the value in these moments. Like find the, hey, what's God trying to teach me in these moments? What What's out there for me right now that I can use um, because I know God's building character in me right now. I know God's going to use this purpose. I know God's going to use this pain. I know God's going to use these tears um, to elevate me in the future. I don't know when. I don't know what it's going to look like. But I know this season of life right now is going to be pivotal. And it's going to be my life's message. It's like, I don't think God brings, you know, pain. God's not the author of confusion. God doesn't bring hard times. But God can use hard times, right? It's like, you know, what Parker's gone through. Like, she don't know it yet, but this could be, you know, the season of life that she had to go through to elevate her one day to to reach not only women, but young girls who are going through hard times. Like, dude, this could be her life message. Hey, real crazy to, necessary. to that point. Um, you didn't even know this. I was going to tell you this before, but I didn't hadn't told you. I was I was I was going to tell you. But um, so I got a message from Joel Taylor, which he's the co-founder of Bethel Music, mm -hmm. and his his boy Jax dealt with yep. the E. coli, and, and I mean, that was one of those stories that kind of captivated America. Like, it, it, there yeah, was I remember that. so many people praying for him, and a little boy that was, like, given, like, no chance to live. I mean, it had taken over, shut down all his organs, and and um, and I, I remember being in, in bed at night with my wife, reading that, looking at that story on Instagram years ago, mm -hmm. and being, like, just, like, heartbroken, and, like, praying to God for, for this little boy, and... Um, who would have known like a couple years later that that his testimony would have given gave me hope when I was in that hospital bed, hopeless, faithless, just feeling like, man, crying out to God, like, why is this happening? And that uh, we watched Jax's testimony that night, that night that we knew, the first night that we, we slept overnight when she was um, admitted to the hospital. 
and we listened to Raise a Hallelujah, listened to worship music, and we just, you know, prayed over Parker the whole night while she slept. And so he just put a message out or just he, he started a, a healing worship uh, program that he's doing. So I sent him a message and told my Parker. And so um, he's like, hey, can you, cr- you know, cut a quick 90 second testimony? He shot me a text message. I said, yeah, that's cool. So I did the last time with Parker. Nice. And, uh, and this morning he sent me a message. He said, hey, man, we've already shared this with a bunch of people where their kids are going through cancer. And he's mm-hmm. like, it's blessed them and given them such a, a, a sense of hope that they can get through this that's and God amazing. is with them. And uh, and you're right, man. God will never waste any tears. He, he works all things together for good. Amen. And, uh, and that's what he does, man. And, and the last thing I'll say is I remember after I gave the message, you getting up and you didn't just think it. You said it to everybody. Did I? You did. Yeah. You said it. I was sending you and you said it. And I thought like, because I mean, we're all humans. We yeah. all have that. Every one of us, man. Like, um, and I just thought like, man, God, God's got brand. Like, you know, like, y- cause you got up and you said that in front of everybody, you know, that you you were applauding, that you were celebrating yeah. and you gave that example. And I thought like, man, you know, cause I, f- I felt the same way with you, vice versa. Like, I mean, it's just how we feel. Yeah. It's like when anybody like has a highlight in what you're doing, you can have that sense of feeling. And I think that when you're in, in tune with God and in the spirit, like, like you'll have that nudge where you can be like, all right, I got to tweak this injustice. And that's where you go leaps and bounds above in character because you've, you've really kind of stiffed armed the enemy trying to creep in mm-hmm. in a point where God's like, Hey, there's a breakthrough coming. Yeah. And, um, you know, just like a seed that's getting ready to break through the ground, man, like it's, it's in the, it's been in the dark for the longest period of time before it breaks the surface. Yep. And for a lot of you guys, man, there, there's what's been above you is about to be beneath you. Hey, Amen. And, on. um, when you're furthest from that, that light, you know, or, or you've been in the dark the longest, that's when you're the closest to the light, man, the breakthrough is getting ready to happen. But you gotta you gotta get the attitude right, you gotta get your mind right, and you gotta build an expectation that man, the best is yet to come. And so as we get into the wrapping this up, we're gonna have some bonus content, guys. Make sure to to check it out. We're gonna dive into more depth on how you can really take this and make it applicable for you in your life. Our desire wasn't just to have another podcast, because who knows that there's a lot a podcast out there man you get a podcast and you get a podcast <laughs> and every, i mean they're out there man yeah. in abundance yeah. but uh you know our desire was was to make a true change to make sure we bring something that's going to be a great value that doesn't just make you feel good but man empowers you with practical things to go out there and put it into place and see your life leveled up in all these areas that do matter most and so bro, bro i appreciate you man love you bro Love you, dude. Let's go out there and make it a massive week, guys. Make sure to subscribe. Hey, and you probably already did this. So I don't need to say it. But if, if you haven't already, share this. You know, what, what these this is one of the podcasts where I think you probably already did it while we were talking because um, you saw the value. And just like, you know, anything else, like sometimes a simple share makes all the difference in the world because you don't have to be the person that said it. But if you got them the information that brings them the value, man, that, that's the difference that is needed to be made and uh that was we progress and get better so guys make it a big week let's go out there crush it be strong stay steadfast we'll talk to you soon